Guys, I'm frustrated with this happening because my computer is unsupported. Uh, no amount of repair works, so it's time to put Linux on this. This is my warehouse shipping station, is what I call it. I have everything backed up. External hard drive there, a couple internal hard drives here. My main goal is to get this printer running on Linux. Um, and I'm told via the, the magic words of the internet that this will work under any Debian-based Linux distribution. So, you know, that's like Ubuntu or uh, Linux Mint, one of those, I think. Linux Mint is one of them. And we're going to look around, see what we can find. We're going to get Linux on here and stop messing with Windows 10, ugh. Guys, I apologize, but this is where I lost some, hey, there's some exercise bands. This is where I lost some footage to uh, the install of Mint. So what I did is I just took my little USB stick and I used Etcher to go ahead and build that. Uh, I didn't film that. I've got another video on that. I've, I'll mention several times in this video and link it. But um, once I got Etcher to lay down Linux Mint on that USB drive, I just took it in, plugged it in my computer, booted, loaded the live setting, uh, what they call Linux Live, so I could test it and make sure it worked. And then I just went ahead and clicked install. And basically what it was was a status bar going across the screen. That's all there was to it. So we're going to start off back here where Mint is already installed. Well, guys, Mint installed fine, Linux Mint. So I know I don't really have a hardware problem, I don't think. It's installing fine. Going to my SSD. Also, if you want to know how to make a bootable USB stick for something like Mint, I have a video I'll link up here somewhere for, uh, you know, how you use Etcher basically to make those... Uh, bootable USB sticks. But installed, doing an update right now. Come back in a minute. Okay guys, first hiccup. Monitor says no signal. I've got the cover off the front of the PC. Drive light solid. I think I'm gonna have to power it off, power it back on, and see what happens. All right, powering on. We'll see if it even boots. All right, here's the bias. And I just set the stage. I walked away. I started the updates and I walked away. Did a bunch of other things. This was normal when I booted with the USB even, so I think it'll keep going. Walked away. I don't know, maybe maybe it's power save setting or something. It seems to be coming back up. We'll see. We will wait impatiently. By the way, that wasn't the drive light that saw it. That was a power light. That's the drive light, so my mistake. Oh, we are running in fallback mode. If you expect source to crash this local extension applet desk, let's restart. All right, guys, this is a problem. It says we're running in fallback mode. If you suspect a local extension applet or desklet, you can disable add-ons. Do you want to restart? So for grins, I went ahead and said that, restart. And it does the same thing over. So I'm not sure what that is. Gonna need to dig into that. Um, I'll probably do that real quick before I go any further. One thing I'll try real quick before I move forward, I'm going to go to Administration Driver Manager and just make sure this sees my video card okay. Hang on, let me type my password in. Alright, just got the password typed in. We'll see what this says. Alright, never mind. Looks like we are up to date on driver-wise. That's interesting. Alright guys, I think we fixed all the, uh, all the cinnamon crashing on it by updating. So here's the latest. Hey guys, just to summarize the Linux Mint install, this this uh, guide right here on their website just walks you right through it, right? Basically, you choose the right edition, you start with a live boot, which is like the, you know, test it out type mode. Then you can click install right from there. Once you get installed, you go down to post installation and hardware and drivers, which I didn't have to do anything on that. I found everything on mine fine. Multimedia codecs, we wanna install that just so you know you can get mp3 all those other codecs you're going to use in in all your media things your language support and your sn system snapshots that's kind of like your uh fallback versions right so you take a system snapshot once you install it and you know it, you can send everything back to that snapshot if something wrong happens later so you don't have to just keep reinstalling over and over and losing your data and then it has some troubleshooting sections didn't even have to get into that now i'm not multi-booting this system so 
It was fairly straightforward and easy. I didn't try to transfer over any data. I do have all my data backed up, so I can just copy that back over uh, into a data directory. I actually have it all on other, other drives in mirrored, so I'll just point to those drives and I can pull that data back up. But pretty easy for me. I think the hardest thing is really um, getting the, the USB stick, right? And I got another video on that and I'll link that here. I'm gonna download this Rolo driver, which is this printer, our shipping printer. See if we can get this running on this thing. You go straight to the Rolo website. There is a beta Linux driver re reported successful on an Arch-based system, but we're gonna try here. Guys, installing the Rolo printer uh, takes a lot of terminal work. Uh, about halfway there, I got to where I can at least open up the PDF guide that is uh, in with your download. So if you're not a Linux person, this this might be kind of difficult for you just if you don't understand normal stuff, but I'll leave my terminal output below to get into all that in a minute. Uh, but first I'm gonna look over this guide because I found some instructions on Amazon, some guy wrote up, which aren't quite exactly right for my scenario anyway, but, but we'll read through this, compare those and see if we can get to a best uh, conclusion on how to get this printer installed. Is I got the driver installed according to the instructions. Basically you gotta change the permissions on the install script and then type the install. Now the PDF tells you to go into cups to do all this. I'm gonna to try to add it right here from my adder printer. I'm gonna cheat just to see if it works, see if we can cut out a step because I don't really need to share the printer. I know cups is 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 a Linux printing thing that helps you share too, but and I don't know. Let's try this. And if not, I'll have to go back and do the cups piece. So what we'll do is we'll do add Generic cups, no, 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 no. Right there, thermal printer. All right, so we'll go forward, searching for drivers. All right, I don't think this one's gonna work. All right, so I'm gonna have to go back through the PDF instruction and uh, and go through the cups info. It looks like I could have selected the PPD file to get that on, but I don't wanna screw things up too bad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out this CUPS instructions and, and go from there. All right guys, changing my mind. I, I'm looking at those Amazon instructions again, and it says to go ahead and just do the add a printer and choose the thermal printer, set it up as a USB printer. So let's just try it. I just installed this system. Let's do short name. Let's call it the Rolo. Printer, thermal printer, apply. Would you like to print a test page? Uh, sure, but I think I need to set my, let's not do it yet. So now let's do properties. Yeah, here we go. So it is USB. All right, looks like this works so far. I need to get to where, it's not necessarily policies, where I can set, here we go. Is this it? Media size. It's four by six. Four by six. For that's my printer label. I'm gonna apply that. And then let's get the job options. Don't think there's anything there that we can do. Ink and toner level settings. Let's go ahead and do this and see if we get anything. Submitted. Oh, look at that. It worked. Okay, so we'll go over a little briefly how we did this now that we figured it out and go from there. There's a close up of that test page. It'll be upside down, but you can get the idea. Okay, guys, this is my text output, even all my screw ups in there of what I had to do to copy this file that I downloaded from a downloads directory into a folder I created, Rolo which maybe I spelled wrong. No, I spelled it right. And, and then copied it over there. Basically tar unzipped it, all that stuff, and got it to where I can install the driver. And then what I did from there, and I'll put this down in the description so you guys can see that and see how it goes. Um, so it is a little bit more abbreviated than that PDF you have uh, that came with your, your driver. Then after you get the driver installed, I'll call it, running through that script and everything, you go in here, you click add, and then you'll choose, uh, uh, it'll say printer, thermal printer, at least that's what mine said. 
So then you go forward down here and it's a printer connected to a USB port and it'll say search for drivers. Oh, sorry, you gotta wait when it says searching for drivers. And then it'll eventually come up, I believe, and say, you know, add a driver. Okay, so this is what it will come up to right here once you wait forever. <laughs> and you'll do the provide PPD file. And then what you'll do here is click, uh, this is your file system basically, and you need to go to other location. This is what I did, computer. And it'll take you to your root directory where you made your Rollo directory. At least that's how I did it. Go in a couple levels, go under the Ubuntu x86, and then PPD will show up. Click PPD and then choose that file and add it. And then you go forward from there. And that's all you do to add that Rollo printer. And then I went in through and I printed a test page after that and, uh, and it seemed to work. So that is the summary of this on how you install this Rollo printer on Linux and the summary of how I installed Linux, super easy. Uh, this is Mint Linux version. Um, so we have that running. Next, I think we're gonna work on getting Plex going on this thing, Plex server, because we have a lot of home videos on here that we feed up to the televisions uh, that the kids love to watch. So that maybe a next video on that soon. But here's like, this is just a quick one on getting rid of Windows, getting Linux Mint on and moving forward. There's also gonna be other apps we're gonna get back on here because this is not only the warehouse uh, computer, it's also the 3D printing uh, computer here too. So we'll get OpenSCAD, Cura, you know, all those other 3D printing programs on here too. Uh, I don't think there's anything really Windows specific we need on here. If we need to do any video editing, we may be able to put, you know, just a generic Linux one on here. If you got a suggestion for video editing on a generic Linux, not, not necessarily DaVinci Resolve, not sure it's going to run at least not an older version would but maybe not a newer one but anything that's more lightweight like iMovie on here uh leave a comment let me know what that is but anyway we're off windows now and we're cooking with gas we got our printer going uh, we're going to stop this one here and we're going to move on to more apps in future videos it's down here in the warehouse uh it turned out pretty good what do you think i think I thought maybe I had a hardware problem at first because Windows just kept failing to start and I think it was after updates and then it was telling me I wasn't going to get any more updates because my hardware is out of date. I'm like, forget it. I'm done with Windows here. I'm just going to see if I can get this thing to run, print my labels, do my 3D printing stuff and uh, go from there. I, I got to get Plex server on it. Plex should be fairly easy. It's, it's, it's kind of Linux, uh, I'll call it native. Um, maybe not, we'll find out, but that'll be next. Next video will be Plex as we build onto this and get this back into shape. Hey, uh, considering a couple changes, uh, maybe a couple ads to the channel, maybe like a little podcast format, um, let me know if you guys are interested in that. I was thinking about bringing on some guests. I don't know the frequency and all that, but you know, just to do interviews and talking about kind of life in general, I, I, I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, maybe how we do finances, small businesses, micro businesses, just life in general, right? And uh, and how we incorporate those things. I don't know, let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, we'll see you next time.